child, how improving child survival could, could be achieved now only by giving due attention to pediatric critical care, and that first requires training. We have gone through the steps of basic health care, immunization, safe deliveries, sanitation, oral rehydration, pneumonia management, programs that are geared toward neonatal care, primary care, and some more covering part of the care in the bigger hospital. But there remains a lot of child health area which are not covered. And these deaths in children occur because they are seriously ill. So see, that serious illness requires an uniform approach to management, resuscitation, and care right at the doorstep, rather than waiting for them to come to the hospital. And that's where it comes in the role of emergency medical care, which I would like to define as provision of immediate or urgent medical interventions necessary to prevent death or disability. Now, when it, we talk in context of development of the world, development of the nation, one of the Millennium Development Goal that the world has set for itself is under five mortality. And these graphs from 1990 to 2012 show a clear decline, half the decline in child health because of all the measures that we have talked about. But even now, every day in the world, 18,000 children under five die. And 22% of these are in India, which means we are the largest contributor to under, child, under five deaths. And uh, do we have a responsibility to that? Do we need, really need to work on reducing it? And I'm sure everyone would agree with it that we have to do it. We have gone a long way from 280, it is down to now about 45, but it has to come down further. And that could be brought down by giving attention to the, what causes death. You know, all of us know that underlying malnutrition contributing to the various illnesses, particularly pneumonia, neonatal care illnesses, diarrhea, malaria, and some of other illnesses. But the common underlying emergency there is either a respiratory failure that occurs because of pneumonia or sepsis, which cause sometimes shock and sometimes other things. But that's the cause of that. And if we could start treating them at early stage, perhaps it could be easily managed. And as I was just saying that India does have pneumonia, diarrhea, and neonatal illnesses, which where again the sepsis is the most important thing. So can we go beyond nutrition, immunization, neonatal care, and all? And especially when it comes to 25% of children presenting to any ambulatory care in the country are seriously ill. When they reach this stage to a bigger hospital, they've already wasted precious time, probably waited for a whole night before catching a bus to the nearest town. And that could be the difference between life and death. And can we therefore make that care available? Because 70% of the deaths in hospital occur within those 48 hours, which is because of the lost time. So, my thesis is that if we can utilize the currently available knowledge, put that through teaching, learning, transfer it to everyone who is a stakeholder in child health, mother, community, and then of course all kinds of health workers, we can improve it. And there is a very important social argument as well to provide more care, at em or emergency care, because it has been very clearly brought out in our neighboring countries at least, that people come to healthcare facilities if they get emergency care there as well. Otherwise they don't get much faith in that facility. So it is also important for us if we really want people to come to hospitals, provide them emergency care there. Unfortunately, we do not have any model for care in these countries, uh, in countries like ours where resources are poor. And my 
submission would be that we need to evolve a model for ourselves, which should start right from the families. And we have to keep in mind that children don't give you time like adults still give. There is no reserve there to sustain the illness or the injury and the insult caused by it. So care in the community, early transportation, care on arrival in a, any healthcare facility, be it a primary healthcare center or a CHC, or you're not talking about big hospitals and big cities, which only constitute a very small proportion of healthcare facility in terms of the whole population of 1.2 billion. So seeking care is delayed because of lack of transportation and all. And so if we look at our healthcare structure right now, it's a primary health care, and what does it provide? ORS, antibiotics, some but crucially missing is life support, and of course, very few people are able to reach doctors and the hospital and the specialist. And therefore, all these level of care are not there for the general people. And so what we need is to improve the first stage of care, and that would need a national commitment. Because even if we say we provide everything that's possible at all our health centers, there are, there are 4,000, 5,000 roughly, and about 25,000, 24,000 PSCs. And the doctor-patient ratio is just 100 by 1,800, which is hardly anything what, compared to what the WHO would recommend, 1 to 250. Reaching every village, 650,000, is not easy. And then the number of doctors, minuscule, number of nurses, minuscule, to meet that 650,000, you have one nurse every village in this country. Forget about the doctors. So recent advance, imp improvement in the health care where the ASHA health workers have come, I think something similar to that need to be done. Either these con workers or community volunteers or mothers could be trained. And the emergency, since it starts at home, if the benefit is brought to home, and it's not that I'm talking just out of my mind, but it has been shown. It has been shown in countries like Mexico. You train mothers and first level health worker, the community volunteers in other words, it can bring down mortality because of diarrhea and pneumonias, which are basically sepsis and shock by almost one third without any, any financial inputs, just by improving the education. This is data from our place, and all I want to emphasize is that so many children, 2% of all those who arrive in emergency are actually brought dead because they have not received that care or initial care at any place before they arrive to a tertiary care facility. And so what we need is a training of community volunteers, and it's again not something which is not feasible. Gurcheroli project by Dr. Abebang has clearly shown that you can teach community volunteers clinical signs of serious illness, not particular diagnosis of this condition or that condition, but a child is seriously ill or septic or is about to go into severe sepsis. And with help of that, with 100% sensitivity and 92% specificity in identifying Neonatal, uh, neonatal deaths, they were able to reduce deaths due to sepsis, which can happen in a tribal area. I'm sure it can happen in an area which is much better endowed with transport infrastructure and all kind of other amenities. And it has been shown in different countries, Africa, again about one third of pneumonia mortality could be just brought down by volunteer. And that's how we brought ARI mortality down, but that was through community health workers mostly, not the community volunteers. But this is trauma mortality brought down in Iraq by simply training 5,000 first responders who were lay people. And 
they reduce the mortality by almost 40 percent. Newborn care, similar such models, and we are doing work on that. We have IMCI. We are trying to teach mothers about danger signs. We are trying to teach mothers about pneumonia, diarrhea, and uses. But important missing link here is when this child gets serious, what is the resuscitation available? What's the emergency care available to treat hypoxia? What is the emergency care available to treat shock? And that could be the reason why we lose, we still continue to have so many child deaths. So we need some capacity to provide emergency care at every level of health, country's health care system, and when they come to us. So this is the group of people I would like to be trained in emergency care resuscitation, particularly looking after hypoxemia and sepsis, and that all that it requires is oxygen, intravenous fluids, and appropriate antibiotics, which health workers have been giving now in different demonstration projects. So in low-income countries, low-resource areas, the only way is that we have to move out of hospitals and doctors and the clinics and go to the people and empower them, non-doctors, for acute care. At the same time, when they come to the health care facility, there should be a way to identify serious illness. IMNCI has done a great job by getting community health volunteers, community health workers trained into it, but there is more, more of it needed and more health workers need to be trained in that. A triage system which can help in identifying children who need immediate care and who could be given. But in current scenario, even in a hospital when a patient comes, they just line up. The seriously ill is not, there is no way of sorting out, there is no process right now, no mechanism in place. And that could be simply done by training people. That these are five or four clinical signs that tells you that this child needs immediate attention or resuscitation. And if we can recognize hypoxemia, hypovolemia, severe sepsis, for which clinical signs are so simple and make available the, the modalities to treat in a short course could be good enough to teach most of the people, most of the non-health workers, and of course health workers, all these. Now, the outside of the government health system, as you can see that there are so many RMPs, small hospitals, which actually run the health system in most of the rural part of the country. It's still not beyond 50% of people are utilizing governmental health facilities. So there is a need to train other group of health functionaries. We as a society, Indian Academy of Pediatrics, had been trying our best to train people in pediatric advanced life support through the society, through the voluntary work, when every one of us put in our time and effort and money to train doctors and now also the nurses and paramedical workers. But I do not think that that alone would take us very far because that's a limited effort. It has to be in the policy. And although we have done a lot to give attention to neonatal care, under five care still needs much more. What we need is training program for healthcare workers and then supply them with that basic kit that I talked about which can take care of resuscitation, and importantly now, when they are sick, needs the next level referral, we still depend most of the time on these very primitive modes of transport. And the transport may not be available, but now at least I'm glad some of the states and private organizations have introduced this, but those are not in the reach of everyone. And to do that, therefore, we again need a political commitment and outlay for a very good transport system. Then only we can probably give the graded care to all these children. 
even if that is not there, sometimes a thing like this can be very helpful because it's a, it would still reduce the time for the patient to get the right care, uh, right time to get the care. So any mode of transport, whichever is available, but which is motorized, could be utilized, but it has to be brought into the system and not the individual has to fend for themselves and when you know how it works in our country. And if, if the patient makes to this hospital, outside the big hospital, he doesn't know, he knows that there's a big board, such and such hospital, but where should he go immediately for the emergency care? So we do also need to clear that mage, and that is for all of us who are also administrators, advisors, looking after these places, that we do identify clear signages and the clear area for emergency arrivals. It is not only for ambulance arrivals. In some big cities, some big hospitals have it, but we still need to do a lot. And this is the data from world, all over the world. We are no different in it. Probably you will find a echo of everything in these, that 21 hospitals, 13 district hospitals, 8 teaching hospitals, most emergency treatment areas are poorly organized, 14 facilities did not have a triage system, and there is an inappropriate or delayed triage in another 8 and 41 percent, and therefore even if it is there, it is not serving the purpose. So we need to work and that again could be achieved through appropriate training. PALS or advanced life support, advanced pediatric life support, emergency care, and this ETAT, which had been brought by WHO as a simple tool to triage, could be applied at different levels of care. And this all is only about training, not about much of the financial layout other than introducing a training program, trainers, forming that in every district and every area. This can also reduce the overcrowding and all these emer emergent patients flocking in a big hospital. And then we keep on blaming the inefficiencies of the hospital because there is no health care available to these people before they arrive here. We identified some time ago that the main, the main complaints that the patients come to emergency are fever, breathing difficulty, trauma, asthma, and respiratory infections, cough, respiratory distress, diarrhea, and seizures. And all this can be taught appropriately to different functionaries to manage and that could give a lot of relief. While doing so, of course, keeping the seasonal trends in mind where we know diarrhea is in summer peaking and then there are peaks for various conditions, asthma and pneumonia. So if we can do that and also particularly look for these epidemics like dengue this year, again, pattern recognition, these simple things could be taught to every individual, not necessarily health worker. And once these are there, emphasis now on more of a medical person, where recognizing shock could be taught easily with simple clinical signs like all these may not be very specific but they are quite sensitive and would help it and even if these are in the focus while giving treatment with fluids and antibiotics and oxygen simply looking at correction of the normalization of heart rate blood pressure or that ratio can you can see that reduce the mortality more than half in each of these parameters so it does not require huge layout on critical care intensive care unit it could be done all outside the wall of those four units, but it really needs people being aware, people being trained on it, and we can achieve our target. At our center, when we looked at number of patients who were brought, these are 900 patients brought to our ED, 
very small number requires that CPR which is fine-tuned but even that can be teach, taught to low, lay people but most of the persons most of the children just need bag mass ventilation oxygen and airway and oxygen therapy and IV fluids and with that you can manage almost 90% of all emergencies that come and perhaps I'm sure it would save a lot of lives so all you need is these resources for managing airway vascular access or fluids and not necessarily every patient need these monitors but even using these could be taught to health workers and you don't need all the time very well trained intensivist of course in a hospital we need to train about care of emergencies in a more organized manner using rapid response teams and medical emergency teams which again hardly exist in most of the government hospitals most of the district hospitals are without it and so we need to train our doctors on that bag mass ventilation I particularly would to like to emphasize this is study from Chennai emergency department where we all have been shortage of ventilators in children who came with septic shock a large number did not get mechanical ventilation because there was no ventilator available and they were put on manual bag ventilation the, the last two and even there those who were there on ven manual ventilation for less than six hours 80 percent survived and among those who were on ventilator or bag ventilation for more than six hours still 50 percent survived so we can work within limited resources it's about training it's about awareness and of course as I mentioned we are doing as society various courses to train doctors but we need to go to people and health workers and keep it in mind that training imparted once is not enough this is data from a simulation study where which clearly shows that you teach them but after a while once you want to see how implementation is fluid bolus given very well intraosseous not too bad but as simple a thing as weight check could go haywire so while doing all this quality and standardization of the training formation of various training centers and I would think that each district need and we have training centers at each district we could incorporate emergency management of children all those where the training could be imparted to the people and I had been part of one of the pro projects where we had a district where health workers come for a monthly meeting in a block and so we covered eight blocks and four of us would teach them about simple emergency management and some of the other tools for reducing child mortality and it worked very well within a year when we looked at these PSCs, ag these blocks again, they were well endowed with emergency medicine kits and also the satisfaction that the health worker had out of his work that had gone up really tremendously. So what we need is the base starting from trained laypersons and community volunteers who can provide basic life support antibiotics for s initial sepsis and pneumonias and first aids and before even they get to the doctors and nurses in any of the healthcare facility they have received something which will sustain their systems before they arrive at the next level and depending on the resources you can we can define these different levels this is the guideline that we took out for treating septic shock at different levels in our country uh, we authored I authored that at about four years ago but what is simple is most of the health workers if they have oxygen antibiotics IV fluids they can treat almost all emergencies which are life threat and there would they would buy time for the next level of care how do we meet these finances most of the finances still come from people state does its role 
but I think we need to find a way, perhaps insurance, cutting down the cost, and then whatever I have said, we come to this state again. We should reevaluate and again find out whether this whatever we have learned is making an impact or not. So this was, has to be ongoing process as depicted here, training, observation, training modification, and we can probably take care of that part of the triangle which was left by producing, uh, by having these training courses for different level and tra effective transport system. So in the end, I would just like to say that we cannot really define what should be our level of emergency care, but saving lives, if it is our target, we have to at least ensure resuscitation and adequate transport, good triage so that health system is utilized appropriately and effectively, and have go an ongoing research on all these so that we can do possibly the best for, for the greatest good of all for the largest number of children. Thank you.